Welcome back to the Ancestral Findings Podcast. In the annals of America's birth, stories of resilience and tenacity emerge, painting a vivid portrait of its founding father. George Walton was born in approximately 1749 in Cumberland County, Virginia. The exact year of his birth is not known, and some biographers have guessed it to be as early as 1740 and as late as 1750. Yet, 1749 seems to be the most commonly accepted birth year for him. Della Gray Bartholomew, the official biographer of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, used the birth date 1741 for George. George was orphaned as an infant, losing both of his parents around the same time. After that, he was adopted by an uncle. As a child, George entered into an apprenticeship as a carpenter with this uncle. The issue was that George loved to study, and his uncle was against it, believing studiousness to only be an excuse to be idle. George studied on his own, on the side, and then moved to Savannah, Georgia, after his apprenticeship ended in 1769. In Savannah, George studied law under a Mr. Young and was admitted to the bar in 1774 as an attorney. By the time the American Revolution came around, George was one of the most successful lawyers in Georgia. George took up the cause of the Patriots, and this support of the cause led to him being elected secretary to the Georgia Provincial Congress and the president of the Council of Safety. George was appointed as a delegate from Georgia to the Continental Congress in Philadelphia in 1776 and kept this position until late 1778. George voted in favor of the Declaration of Independence on July 2, 1776, along with fellow Georgia delegates Lyman Hall and Button Gwinnett. During the American Revolution, George was in the militia, serving in the battalion of General Robert Howe. This was the position he went into immediately after serving in the Second Continental Congress. On January 9, 1778, George was given a commission as a colonel of the 1st Georgia Regiment of Militia. George was injured during the Battle of Savannah by being hit in the thigh by a musket ball and thrown from his horse and taken prisoner by the British. The British allowed the wound to heal before sending him to the Sunbury Prison, which was being used to keep other American prisoners at the time. In October of 1779, George was released in a prisoner exchange. While George was being kept as a prisoner of war, his brother, John Walton, signed the Articles of Confederation for Georgia, along with Edward Telfair and Edward Langworthy. Almost immediately upon being released by the British, George was elected governor of Georgia, though he was only governor for two months. This was because George was a political ally of Lachlan McIntosh, who was a political foe of Button Gwinnett, George's fellow declaration signer. This made George and Button political enemies, and their quarrels led to George being expelled from the office of governor and indicted for various crimes. None of the indictments involved a conviction, though he was censured for his support of the duel between Lachlan and Button in which Button was killed. George did not stay down for long, though. He was elected to the U.S. Senate as a representative from Georgia. In this role, he helped to mediate a land dispute between South Carolina and Georgia, which helped better define the borders between the two states. George was appointed to the Constitutional Convention in 1787, but he declined this appointment, as he had commitments to Georgia's state politics at the time that left little time for anything else. George served as a presidential elector from Georgia in 1789, and also served on the Georgia State Convention to ratify the nation's new constitution. Also in 1789, George was elected to a second term as governor of Georgia. During this second term, which was of one year in duration, Georgia adopted the new constitution, as well as a new state constitution, moved the state capital to Augusta, where George had moved shortly before becoming governor for the second time, and concentrated on settling the western frontier of the state. After leaving the office of governor, George served as a judge on the state's superior court from 1790 and for the rest of his life. 
George also filled in the unexpired term of James Jackson in the U.S. Senate from Georgia in 1795 and 1796. George was additionally a founder and trustee of the Academy of Richmond County in Augusta and of Franklin College, now known as the University of Georgia, in Athens. While serving his second tenure as governor of Georgia, George built a house he called Meadow Garden. The house, which was called a cottage, was built on land confiscated from British loyalists after the American Revolution. The land was located just outside of Augusta, Georgia. It was there that George crossed to the other side in 1804 in his mid-fifties, if approximations of his birth date are correct. George left behind his wife, Dorothy Camber, who he wed in 1775, and one son. George and Dorothy had two sons, but only one lived past George. George was initially buried at a place called Rosny, which was the name of the house of his nephew, Robert Watkins. Later, in 1848, George was moved and reburied underneath the Signers Monument, located in front of the courthouse on Green Street in Augusta, Georgia. Walton County, Georgia, is named after George. Several schools in Georgia are also named after him. George's surviving son, George Walton Jr., was the first secretary of the Territory of Florida, and also the first civilian to serve as governor of the territory, a role which he filled on a temporary basis as acting governor until the intended governor, William Duvall, arrived. Walton County, Florida, is named after George Walton Jr., so father and son each have counties in neighboring states named after them. Though George was from Virginia and later spent most of his adult life in Georgia, which were both slave colonies and later states, George was, in fact, one of the few signers of the Declaration of Independence who did not, at some point, own slaves. Thank you for joining us today on the Ancestral Findings Podcast. For additional resources and exclusive treats, visit AncestralFindings.com. You can grab a complimentary genealogy ebook, benefit from a free genealogy lookup, and even participate in our weekly historical postcard giveaway. It's a treasure trove for every family history enthusiast. Your support by listening to the podcast, well, it means the world to me. If you want to support us in more ways, consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. Every contribution aids in delivering valuable content and continuing our free genealogy lookup service. From all of us at Ancestral Findings, thank you for being an integral part of our family history community since 1995. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy searching! <music>